All right, uh, Conor McManus is with us in studio today, and he's been helping to launch AIB's Battle Mode, which is the addition to the toughest journey video game. Uh, previously restricted to playing as a single user, players can now choose to wear their county colours of pride to take on inter-county rivals in real time. Check out AIB's game, The Toughest Journey, at thetoughestjourneygame.com. I played it. I'm not very good at it. No, it's a bit tricky. I'm not great at it either. <laughs> <laughs> I got beat. Uh, Sarah Rowe beat me, so I can't really say, sit here and say that I'm, I'm good at it. But no, it's it's it's, it's enjoyable to be game like and and. Um, you know, it's it's definitely something kids can can get onto, and even even grown ups. Yeah, it turns yeah. out we're we're the ones. I think we're the target market for it. It's like yeah, oh, yeah let the kids play yeah. and then actually steal it's, it from um, them. It's a way of getting an avenue of getting to grow park, and obviously we didn't get that this year, so I might try my best with it. Yeah, speaking of which, <laughs> uh, what happened this year? What what happened? Why why was this not the same on team? Yeah, that come to know it's, um, few years? it's hard to hard to put your finger on it. To be honest with you, it's. Um, it's probably a, a lot of small things more than than one thing you could say that went wrong. You know, we, we had a number of injuries throughout the league and um, a couple of picked up a couple of injuries coming into the championship and things like that. I suppose we, we had a good start to the league. We beat we beat Dublin, and then in a game where you were expected to win the following day out, you go down to to Roscommon, which which is which is always a hard place to go anyway. You know, but we end up losing that game, and then you lose your following game at home, and all of a sudden you're chasing points and you're chasing. Um, safety in, in the league and we just seemed to carry that momentum on with us throughout the whole year the negative momentum yeah it just seemed to like and, and the more you try and tell yourself that things are going well and, and that, that you can turn it around and the more you the more you tried nearly the worse things got for us you know was it a, any kind of a hangover from the previous seasons at all I wouldn't say that no like because at the end of the day like the previous season we didn't even we didn't actually win anything you know what I mean it's, it'd be different if you had won an Ulster title or if you'd gone on to an All-Ireland final or whatever the but we didn't we, you know we hadn't we hadn't achieved anything that we, we really wanted to so you couldn't say that it was a hangover from any success or anything like that there because you didn't really ultimately you didn't have any you know yeah sometimes failure can lead to hangovers too though just this kind of sense of how close we've been to, yeah. to something magical I think I think the the idea there was that that was going to drive us on even further than yeah. than, than than anything else. You know, we 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 had you know broken that ceiling that that we had been told that we couldn't get through semi quarter finals and things like that there, and probably didn't perform overly well in in a semi final yet could have been in an All Ireland final. So to that end, I don't think it it was more you know we've we've got here now we want to get back. That was you know and just never happened for us you know yeah uh, Malachy obviously has stepped away at the end of the year I don't think anybody was surprised that he stepped away and yet when you look at the body of work that he's put together it's as good as any manager has done given the size of the county right and yeah I, like I, he, he, he's 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 been he's been brilliant for modern football you know Malachy came in in 2012 at the end of 2012 we'd just been been relegated to division 3 you know so it was probably as far as Monaghan for, could have went, you know, because there was a, still a panel of players there that you would you would have felt that was more than competitive if, if you got things right. So it was probably as far down as Monaghan were going to go. So we probably had hit rock bottom at that stage. And Maliki came in and I suppose got us into a into a habit of winning and just got a culture of, of winning games and a, and and a you know a more confident positive dressing room you know from 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 the previous few years. So he you know he's he had been brilliant with us. A couple of Ulster titles, obviously won one in, in 2013. And, and successive promotions from Division 3 to 2 and 2 to 1 and we've been in Division 1 since so you know Maliki owes Monaghan nothing you know there's, there's, there's no doubt about that and he's, he's going to be a loss to Monaghan football there's, there's no doubt about that either What is the legacy from that level of sustained playing in Division 1 um, beyond the expectations that your supporters mm. have and that you guys have that um, you're a team who should be at the top table like in terms of style of play in terms of belief in terms of the philosophy on the game is that mm. there? Is that embedded now for whoever? Yeah, comes next? I think I think it is. Yeah, and and like to be fair to Maliki, like during the during the seven years that he was there, we've picked up a couple of Ulster minor titles, maybe three Ulster minor titles in them seven years that Maliki was there, and Ulster under, under twenty one titles. So <clears throat> there has been very good work going on in the background to that, and and you know the foundations are there for Monaghan football. Hopefully for the next five to 10, 15 years, you know, there's a lot of good work going on at development level, and. Um, you would hope now that it's just whoever comes in is going to continue what what Malagi has done and, and hopefully try and improve on it and build on it. You know, when you say continue what he's done, like I, I'll take for granted that everybody who is in the running for that job and who gets that job <coughs> is going to continue to have the elite level strength and conditioning that you guys have, have clearly had. In terms of a style of play, 
does that need to evolve at all? Do you need to, to look at what other counties are doing and start to match up to them? Or? Yeah, well, I think like if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in Crow Park two weeks ago at, at the Kerry-Donegal game, for example, like we played Kerry in the quarterfinal in the, in the same stage last year and it finished one seventeen each in Clonus. That game between um, Donegal and Kerry finished one twenty each. And I think there are the, the levels that you have to get to in terms of what you're going to score if you're going to go on ahead and ultimately be successful in, in Crow Park in the bigger games, in the, in the semi-finals and the finals in, in, in the All-Ireland Series. Yeah. You need to be fit to come to Crow Park and tag on scores like that. You know, But then on the flip side of that, you need to probably keep it tighter at the back then. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is that you actually think that this year was just a blip. Mm. That actually, the, the Monaghan side who went toe-to-toe with that Kerry team is as prepared as the Donegal team who's just gone toe-to-toe with them. But you just had a bad a down year for a well, bunch of different Well, look, at the, the, the proof would be in the pudding next year, I suppose. But you would, you would certainly feel that because, the, you know, we're probably not going to lose too many players. You, you might have maybe one or two of the, of the older, you know, boys that are 35, 36, 7 that may step away. But after that, then you're down to a, a, an age group of players where, you know, myself and Darren Hughes and Drew Wiley are just gone past 30, 31. Um, and after that, then you're into you're into the likes of Colin Walsh, Fenton Kelly, um, Kieran Duffy. You know, them lads are all 28, 29. And then below that, you have a good core of players at 23, 24, 25. So there's a good mix there. And I, and I think it's just about harnessing that again and, 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 and getting back on the horse, really. Just won the last two minor titles as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Banty was involved in that. and he's he was involved in one of them and he was with, with under 20s this year. So, like as I say, there is good work going on there and, you know, Monaghan, Monaghan football is in a decent place and it's, it's, yes, it's disappointing the way the year went this year, particularly after, you know, getting to a semi-final and hoping that you were going to go on ahead. But, uh, you know, I don't think you can... You can be too despondent about it. I think there's there's reason for for optimism. But what about your own game? Obviously, to to stay at the elite level that you've been at for the last five six years, even longer at this stage, um, you need to evolve. You need to change the 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 game itself has changed. How is your game evolving? Yeah, um, I suppose it it evolves with the game, and and you know it's probably becoming a wee bit more open now for, for inside forwards probably than what it had been in, in previous years and you know in, in previous years when, when defensive systems and you know sweep, sweepers and double sweepers and all that there was in you had to nearly think your way through a game a wee bit more and, and you know even before the game started you needed to be thinking about where you were going to go or what you were going to do in certain circumstances and trying not to allow yourself drift through a game without having an impact in it you know um, so that that has evolved a wee bit more now. I think. When did you first notice that you weren't being double teamed as often? Well, it's it, it still does happen. Like you still there is still, but it's not as out and out defensive uh, defensive as it was. You know. Yeah. Um, so that there's a, there's a wee bit more off the cuff football, I suppose, to be played. You know, for example, the the, the Kerry the Kerry game last year in 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 Clonus, like. Kerry will go out and they'll play you man for man. They'll put up one sixteen, one seventeen, one eighteen on the board and. And the, 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 not to say that they'll allow you to do that at the other end, but they're not as defensive minded as other teams. And, and I think when you get to the, the elite sort of top four, five, six teams in the country, that's the kind of football they're all playing because that's in order to win, that's what you have to be fit to do is go yeah. and post big scores. So that, that sea change in opinion happened, um, and everybody got the memo except Tyrone. <laughs> Although even they seem to have got the memo for a little bit and they've kind of gone back now to, to a very defensive yeah, style. Yeah, well, it's, it's serving them well at the minute anyway when, and we'll see how that develops yeah. over the next week or ten days, you know. Um, that Kerry game was wild. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to talk to anybody who's played in that game um, since, but at one stage you were on the end of a through ball from Rory Began from a kick-out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's probably... A, a, a tells two stories. I suppose it, it showed how much... Kerry had had pressed our kick out, you know, and and it, again, it's it's a bit. The tactics have like four or five years ago, teams were conceding kickouts. You know what I mean? Now it's about squeezing kickouts and trying to get as much possession from the opposition kickout as you possibly can. And Kerry done that, you know, quite aggressively against us that day. Um, and then also that tells the story that Rory can really kick the ball quite long. Um, but yeah, it, it it was it was a good game and funny. It's not a game I've I've watched back. You know, before, but you know, anybody that you'd ever talked to since that, that always referenced that that game has has been a really good game. But look, Kerry have been involved in them games year after year. You know what I mean? And they were involved in another one in Crow Park there um, two weeks ago. You know? Yeah. Are you, and are you watching that game going? Ah, shite! We should be in this. Well, yeah, I was actually at Crow Park that day, 
and you know you, you see the the teams warming up and you see them coming running out onto the field and things and you're thinking right this that's where you need to be like you can be sitting in a stand or you can be sitting in a studio talking about it or whatever the case is but ultimately as a as a player there's no substitute for being on the field you know I know you're talking about um, you were in that tier of players who were 30 31 like there's only five or six more years at most that you'll be able to continue doing that does yeah. that like I don't know if you have a figure in your head that you're kind of thinking okay well that's my cutoff point point. Um, and if you don't happy days but those opportunities like next year when you're in the huddle before the first round of the Ulster Championship you don't know that it's going to be another ten years of that mm. No, no, and, and and that's probably something that maybe would come into your thinking in the last, you know, even just this year. Now, I, I have no figure in my head either, and, you know, you, you'll always play for as long as your body allows you to play and, and, and that you're picked, and I suppose that's the, the most important thing. But, yeah, it's not something that you would have ever thought about before that because you're just playing in the moment and everything else. But when, when, when you start to see some of the boys that you've been playing with for... Eight, nine, ten years start to step away. You yeah. start to think well, this is coming my way. Some, some of these years now, again, as you say, there's no you're putting no time frame on it. But that's that's the reality, you know. You've obviously always been a leader in, in terms of how you play off the field and, and training and all that kind of stuff. Do you feel like you've had to embrace that role a bit more as the younger kids are coming through? Is that natural for you? Yeah, well, I suppose that that was it. And, and when Maliki came in seven years ago, he he made me vice captain of the team. Owen Lennon was then the captain at the, at the time. Um, and then the following year I was captain for three or four years or whatever it was so you probably got a, a gradual lead into it you know that particular year it's not something you would have thought about at the time whenever he came in you know am I a, one of the leaders here now or am I going to be he put me in that position and then you yeah. just grow into it you know and that's you, you just take that on from then you know You had played your final season before Malachi came in at left half back is that right? No no and to be fair You'd already was, moved I'd, I'd, I'd made the move uh, Banty had had moved me up to the full forward line in 2010 in his last year. Okay. The previous three years I had been playing wing back, wing yeah. forward. Yeah. But up to that I was I was I was back there and then Banty and then Ian McInerney when he, when he was in for his two years I was inside then. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, had you played club at, at in the half back line or was it? Yeah. Just well, funny. I actually started in the, in the half back line with with the club in 2000 and say five six or whatever it was. Um, probably hadn't just developed physically you know enough to be in in the inside line or whatever it was winning your own ball and taking men on so when you're when you're in the half back lane you come on the end of plays and and you know sneak up the side and things like that yeah, there, yeah. there wasn't as many blankets and things floating about so um and, and it just transitioned from there really i got called into the to the senior team on the back of club performances we were lucky enough to win a couple of championships back then with Clintibbert and um, was called in on, on the back of that and suppose that it, it evolved from then you and know. Who, who decided that you were a corner forward then um, is that what you wanted to play yeah well I suppose that's what I would have played when I was younger you know growing up and what full forward full uh, forward you know corner forward that that type of a role in, 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 in juvenile teams growing up um, but it was just back in the club and sort of in 2008, nine, I sort of drifted from closer towards the goals, you know, and then it, it, it went inside, I think, maybe in 2009, and sort of haven't really come out since. When did you get good at the <laughs> county level? Um, I suppose you're starting to see sprout, sprouts of it in around 10, 11, 12, but, you know, it was ultimately in, in 13 when I suppose I, I felt that I made my mark in it, really, you know, and you felt that you were playing close to you, what you felt you could play, you know, that sort of way. Yeah. There was, there, was, there was flashes of it, you know, over the previous couple of years, but you never really consistently put it together on on, on bigger days and things like that there, and you always felt that it could be there, but... Um, what happened to get you into the vein where you could be consistent? Um, I suppose it, it was just a case of, of, of hard work, you know, and, and it wasn't... Like, Maliki came in to, to us in at the end of 2012, and it's never as if he, he sat you down and says, look, this is what we want you to do. It was just a case that they said, look, just work as hard as you can. I suppose physically I probably developed a wee bit more and got a bit physically stronger. And, you know, we were probably able for that rough and tumble in, inside, you know, that that you're going to get. And it just it just sort of evolved from there. You know, you, you put your head down and you, you worked hard. And, and I suppose the league football and, and playing regularly you know in the National League and, and getting them games on their belt and, and starting to tag up scores and things like that and when you're doing that week in week out regardless of, of what league it's in or what division it's in 
you start to confidence. garner a bit of confidence from that, yeah. and you carry that into the summer, and then when you do it on the on the bigger days in the championship football, and then you just it sort of feeds on from there, you know. Yeah, and that's the that's base camp then for what you mm. you see as as your level. Um, I did want to talk to you about the art of corner forward play, like notwithstanding the fact that there are, there's room for a bit more off the cuff football. Um, we were talking about this recently, and somebody quoted it. Uh, you actually, they said that you don't care what type of ball if it's high or low, so long as it's early. Just get the ball into me. I don't know if you actually did say that or if I was <laughs> I'm not too sure that it did either. But it uh, it does sound like you know something you would something say. you would you know just as long as as long as it's as, as it's going in, you know. The, I suppose the way football went there for a few years, the first reaction of of players, and not just in our team, but just the way football was in general. The first reaction was to nearly to solo it or to fist it sideways, because there was you were actively encouraged probably not to kick it because you're only kicking it to down the sweeper's throat. You mm. know, so it's just, football became a wee bit more methodical in how you break teams down and, and less off the cuff, as you said. Um, but when the opportunity is there, sometimes players in in, in all teams, it's. Looking up and checking to see it on doesn't even become an option. You know, it, it's just we we were for years there in, in beating sweep, sweepers and blankets. You were programmed to go sideways and and even to get the chin up to look to see what was there. You know, maybe wasn't wasn't an option at times. You know, so shoot on sight or shoot even like know where you are in the pitch when you get the ball. Shoot, is that the not even even but even playing from deep. You know, coming from the half back line or midfield or whatever the case is. Right. You know, the, don't even look because you're not going to have time. You yeah. get swallowed up. <clears throat> Just get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. And and what the tendency was was to run it. You know, rather than look up to see if something was on, because there was two or three sweepers there. Nine times out of ten, it wasn't the right option. Yeah. You know, so. And if you're a corner forward, making that run, making that run, making mm-hmm. that run, making that run, and it's never coming because your teammates aren't looking up. Yeah. A bit frustrating, it I would. Can, it can be that's that, but again, that's just the way football went. It, yeah. It wasn't like the modern team was no different to the Mayo team or the Kerry team or the Donegal team. Yeah. It was just how it was. So you you had to figure your way out and figure your way around it. You know. Yeah. How did you do that, and, and when did so that that changes like sixteen around that time? Is it like is it is it three years ago that started to change? When that that it, the players started to look up and yeah. Well, I suppose it 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 it, it came with, I suppose the more attacking teams winning again you know what I mean I suppose Donegal brought a certain type of football to to to, to the country and were successful at it and were very good at it and yeah. it was up to teams to figure out how to beat it you know and it took a while for that to happen and it took a lot of time and a lot of coaching and, and, and in figuring out a ways around it but now look at Donegal themselves they're probably one of the best attacking teams in the country at the minute you yeah. know they're, they're racking up huge scores every day they go out so they have they have Openly changed their way of of playing as well, you know. So it's it's not just within Monaghan, but it's countrywide that that has changed, and and probably because Dublin are so dominant, that that has forced everybody's hand, you know. And so over the last twelve months, or kind of even the last two seasons, really, did your role change? Was was there was there more freedom for you? And how did you how did you get that? How did the ball get delivered to you to make sure that you're maximising whatever? Yeah, well, I had? suppose it's probably. A, more of an, an emphasis on keeping one or two up, you know, at all times, rather than, you know, f- dropping back. Yes, you have to drop back and do your defensive duties and things like that, but keeping a presence in the forward line, one or two. So don't know, be coming back to the full back line here. No, yeah. There's times when you have no choice, you know, when when, when your man, man goes runs, or whatever yeah. the case is, you can't let him run, you know. But it's it's getting a balance between keeping keeping things tight at the back and also been been a threat up front and that like I, I go back to that if you go to the later stages of the championship you need to be fit to, to, to you know rack up 115 116 117 yeah because if you're not doing that you're not going to win and so when you're one of the two people who are up front for for Monaghan is that just about making runs and making sure you're available for an outlet so if an early ball is coming that at least if it is 50 50 mm. it's kind of you can try and make you're, it 55 you're, you're, an option, you're an option for yeah. a, to, to be a launch pad for the rest of the team you know even if it's if you're only winning it at least there's 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 something there to hold the play up and get get other lads involved and yeah. and, and and you know move your way up the field rather than being penned in the whole time you know so your own game hasn't really changed that much it's like you still want to try and create as many one on ones as you possibly can D- absolutely that that hasn't changed you know but you suppose the option to do that is is 
more now than maybe it has been in the previous four, five, six years. You know? Yeah, so it sounds like you're enjoying playing integrated football more now even than you were four or five years ago. Yeah, well... It's a, it's a better game to play. It, it probably has. It has changed. It, it, there's, as I say, there's, there's openly more of an emphasis on attacking than there is, than there is defending. Like the time was you'd go out and defend your way to a win. Yeah. That, that's the way it was. But again, that, that system has, has come and gone now and teams are... are looking to hurt you on the other end more so now. Um, the dublin Tyrone game, the build-up to it has been entirely overshadowed by this debate about who should play their strongest team and why. Where do you stand? Should, should both teams play a strong team? Should both teams not play strong teams? They're both already through. Both so. there, and they're both playing in a semi-final the following week. In uh, six days' time. In six days time yeah. Which in itself is probably unfair. Um, but it's... it's it's a tricky one. I was saying earlier, if if there is a time for Dublin to lose a championship game, this is the one to lose because it ultimately it's not going to have a, a major effect on on their All Ireland campaign. They're in a semi final the following week. It's probably a chance for them to try out a few players that that they want to know a few bit a, a bit about. Yeah. Um, do they do they do that? Do they do they take the foot off the gas? It's it's very hard to teams don't actively go out to lose championship games. It doesn't happen. Um, but with a semi-final coming in six days' time, it's 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 a tricky one. It is because we've never had these type of no. championship games before, no. where they are in both this case through. completely meaningless. Yeah, really, both through. Like Could even last year, I know we went down to Salt Hill in the last day, but Galway were through, but we weren't. Yeah, you know, and we we were all out. Steamrolled them, really. Yeah, in the end. And, but again, it, it's tricky for Galway. They they were through, but again, on the day. They definitely didn't take a step back, you know, yeah. and allow us to, because you know, there was plenty of aggression and, and and physicality in that game, and the way Galway played, there was there was no way that they had decided they were going to take a step because they put out a full team, you know. Yeah. If they were going to do that, they probably would have rested their players and got ready for a semi-final, knowing that they're going to be in it. But it's it is it's a tricky one, and as you say, we've never been in this scenario whereby both teams are through on, on the same play in the same day. What about Mayo and Donegal? Who's going to go through? Uh, that's a tricky one. I'd like Mayo at home in Castle Bar, very hard place to go to get a result. Um, the record's not great. <laughs> no, it's it's not. But it's it's still a very difficult place to go. Like if if you go down there and turn Mayo over, you have a damn good day's work over. Yeah, there. and in fairness, again, we haven't had one of these games in Castle no. Bar where it's do or die for exactly. a place and, in and the that's, semi-final. That's so. like you're you're probably getting both ends of the spectrum here in the Super Eight. You're getting one of the games that's. Not meaningless, but it's 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 a bit of a dead rubber. Yeah. And you get another one where it's do or die on another thing, you know. So it it is throwing up the beauty of the Super Eights now this weekend. Mayo probably haven't been going along as well as they would like, but they're there. They're in a they're in a position. If if somebody had told Mayo six weeks ago that to win this game and you're through. Last game of the Super Eights in, in Castle Bar, they take you're it. Through, they take it yeah. all day long. And they've two weeks to get ready for it. So who do you think's actually gonna win? If if the if the word on Donegal's injuries are true, um, if if they're missing the likes of Neil McGee, Paddy McGrath, obviously Umban Gallagher's missing. There's word on Paddy McBrady as well yeah. struggling. If that is true, that's too much. It, it swings it back in Mayo's favour. If if they're if they're playing, it's 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 a really tight game to call. I do honestly see it possibly being a draw and Donegal going through on a draw. Um, but if 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 the injuries are there, I think Mayo have a serious chance. That would be some outcome, all right. Um, the word is that it's going to be Banty and Rory as a dream team. <laughs> what's the WhatsApp group saying about that? Yeah, it's um, the WhatsApp group's very quiet at the minute, actually. Uh, not much happening in the WhatsApp group at the minute. Um, look, there's, there's a couple of names out there at the minute. I suppose from a player's point of view, all we can do is let the county board do the thing. Now, they had, they had spoken to a couple of the players, all right, and just said, look, we're going to try and get the best that we possibly can, and yeah. we'll take it from there, you know. But uh, up to that point, th- that's pretty much where our involvement in it has, has stopped. There's been no real communication with them. I suppose it's, it's a club delegates thing, and they nominate their, their men or whatever, and, and it's up to them to take it on from there. In fairness, as county boards go, Monaghan is, like, probably the best in the country. The way they organise football, the way they've managed to get the best out of their resources... I guess you guys have trust in them. Mm, there's no doubt. Like the the, the guys in, in in the Monaghan County Board, Michael O'McMahon and 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 his team there have been have been brilliant. You know, Parik Sherry was there before him, and then guys have have been very easy to work with from a, from a player's point of view. And it's not that players would have a massive. 
dealings with county boards and shouldn't really have. But in any dealings that we've ever had with them, you know, they've been they've been more than good to us, you know, and um, they they try and and fight the players' corner at all times, you know, and you can't ask for any more than that. No, absolutely, Connor. Enjoy the games this weekend. Thanks very much for joining us. All the best. Connor's with us to help launch AIB's battle mode addition to the toughest journey video game. Previously restricted to playing as a single user, you can now choose to wear your county colours with pride to take on inter-county rivals in real time. Check out AIB's game, the toughest journey, at the toughestjourneygame.com.